uh, holder thingy still broken. I'm going to try to get this set up as quietly as possible. All right, internal, just do not disturb thing. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're all set. So we're waiting for uh, Don to show up. He had a question in the Discord about fascia and fudging, papery, and all that good stuff. Um, before we do that, I want to reiterate the guy falkery that's been happening to me for the past couple of years, but now that it's quite obvious, okay? My channel is not just being shadow banned, it's being targeted, and it's, this is a insane harassment levels of falkery, okay? So before we get into the question answer descriptive things today, I want to just remind you guys to please start paying attention, okay? Not just to me, but to everyone, okay? What they're doing to people is insane, it is corrupt, it is incompetence, okay? The numbers don't add up, it doesn't make sense. And what they're hoping for is that you live on this excuse, well, oh, maybe he's not that good, maybe she's not that good. Maybe people just don't like him, maybe the content needs to change. They want you to think that so you don't look behind the curtain. Start looking behind the curtain, please. Okay? Protect your friends. Protect me. Protect people. Wake the fuck up. Thank you. Now, going on to today's segment. <laughs> Don has a question about fascia. Okay? Don, did you, did you pop in? Is that you in the, in, in the thing? Let me give him a second to jump in. Okay, what's up, buddy? Okay, so I don't have the questions on hand. But you were talking about uh, myofascial stuff and the whole idea of the pop effect when you compress someone's body. We have to go over so many things because this word fascia has been going around and it's not, they're not wrong, but they're, they're, it's, there's too many different interpretations and when Chinese martial artists start getting into wordplay, they interpret it and they start to, it, it's like crazy liberals, okay, when they just start changing words, okay? so. And not only doing it with bad intentions or anything like that, I'm just saying, like, they're, they're, because a lot of the things that we do in Tai Chi, internal martial arts, have to do with interoception, proprioception, and mechanoception on a level that the average person cannot comprehend, okay? Proprioception is how your body deals with space, mechanoception is how your body understands you know, mechanical operation, and interoception being able to go inside and, and be able to read the states of your body changes, okay? So most humans cannot comprehend the level of sensitivity that can be developed in the human, okay? Just, a, just imagine right now, I want you to take your finger, and if you have a pen or something, be even better, or any kind of object, I want you to go and see what is the lightest pressure you can possibly sense on your fingertip. Okay? And just figure out. It's a couple of, you know, I forgot how they measure, but it's like ridiculously small. It's a ridiculous, but the thing is, when you're going through your normal day, you don't, you, you dim down those senses. Because the, to have that much awareness of every little detail of your body, you go nuts, right? And then that, that's why it's like, for me, like, I feel everything or nothing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, 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 an issue. So why am I bringing this up? Because when a lot of these guys, masters are talking about fascia, they're using it to interpret their interoception. What are they feeling? What are they experiencing? And a lot of times this gets misconstrued with the actual physics application of what's happening scientifically, okay? And some are even closer than others, but there's a lot of confusion, and then when you talk about this kind of science, the specificity of the words are very important. So he was saying, you know, when I compress the fascia, right? Because he was talking about when, you know, I'm mean, going to get this correct. If you put your hands on someone's chest and they're really rooted, and then you compress them, right? They have this, like, they want to pop up, right? And he was, and he alluded to that, I had to like go around full circle to get to this point. But what he was saying is that if I compress the fascia, what is fascia? People that say it, 99% of these people have no idea what it is. Okay? And then the masters who are speaking about it, they know, but then they misconstrue it with some of the interoceptive thoughts about it, perceptions. Okay? And it's not wrong, it's still a better way to teach them than saying it's a freaking magic cheat. So I always take the master saying it's a fascia, talking to the fascia, peeing on the fascia, that someone's saying it's the chi. And yes, it is the chi, but that is hyper ambiguous, okay? <laughs> so it's, uh, it makes it even worse. So what is fascia really? Fascia, you want you to think of it as the skin of a hot dog, okay? 
there's a fo there's a fascial layer that can that basically binds tissue to keep them in their place. Like if you have hot dog meat and you have that skin on the outside, that skin is fascia. Fascia literally means skin. Okay, <laughs> it's like kind of, literally it's kind of like a, it, this, what it is. It's the outside layer. Okay, your skin is a form of fascia. Epidermis is a, is a form of fascia. What do you want to understand this? The fascial system, as in Tom Myers and Adam Train, what they're speaking about is the connective sheet that creates a path of muscles interconnected from a closed chain, kinetic, closed kinetic chain. So the closed kinetic chain is when I put, let's just say a, a powerlifter versus a, a, a bodybuilder. When they, a bodybuilder does uh, a bench press, you'll see them do awkward positions with their arms because they're trying to isolate muscles, working them out of sequence. So if I move my arm like this and I start pushing from here, I'm only pushing from this corner panel, okay? There's, my body's not really involved unless I try to lock this up and then use my hip, okay? But that's really not what happens in a bench press, right? So you, you're trying to push your back and everything, but the load is here. When I drop my elbows, however, I've created a closed kinetic chain where if I feel pressure here, I feel pressure on my foot. Tai Chi is all about closed kinetic chain, okay? So, the myofascial pathway, for instance, you have a spiral line, right? Spiral lines from the hand diagonally across the oblique sling down into the foot, so torius all the way to the foot. So I can create a closed kinetic chain, a pathway. If I hit somebody here, that wave's gonna ride down this line into that foot, okay? There's lateral lines, there's back lines, there's, you know, there's, there's different pathways and they're very close to the Chinese meridian system. The point being is that they misconstrued that with the, you know, now you have the fascial web, okay? Now you're talking about these are little, it looks kind of like uh, if you took spider web and made it flat, <laughs> okay, and it goes in between the muscles. If you, a piece of steak has, if you see a piece of steak cut and it's raw, and you see the little white lines that, that are inside the meat, that's the fascial web that they're speaking of, okay? And generally, you know, it, it's, you're not doing anything with that, okay? It's, it's not happening. You can control the closed kinetic chain fascial pathway. Those small little webs, they're localized. You understand? They're just transmitting uh, force and vibration and fluids and you know, all this other crap on an, a an opposite axis across the bone. You understand? You want to be following the, the long path. And what it means is that when normal, like when I work in a gross anatomy labs, you would do like sections and then you know, they would say, okay, this is how the bicep works. And they take a dead body and they pull in the bicep and it does flexion and radial supination. Because I pull this muscle and it does this but they isolate it on a dead person. When that bicep's moving, it can be routing this way, it can be routing this way, it can be routing this way. There's a whole there's a different path. So what Tom Myers and these geniuses did was they started doing dissections where they would pull the entire sheet of muscle off in one piece, showing that muscles are interconnected in closed kinetic chains, not in open chain segmented anatomy as it's been taught. That's what the a first Critical, critical piece of information is, okay? So let me make sure, the chat just died, sorry about that. Okay, so I'll make sure you're following this so far. So now you have a difference between, the, you know, like a, oh, his name is Tom Myers, okay? Tom and then Myers, M, M, Y, oh my God. Yeah, M, Y, E, R, S, yeah, okay? And the book is called Anatomy Trains. I have the fourth and fifth. Edition. I did a certification called Four Days at Equinox. So, like, it was like a you know little thingy. So, um, I, I sat in for free. <laughs> I got lucky. But um, and I got the book from my other buddy. So you have to. And I, this is this is 11, 12, 13 years ago. I did this. Okay. So all these people who are coming out talking about the myofascialism, I was studying this before they even knew the word. Okay, and teaching it. So, so like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody, but you know, my frustration now is that there's so many issues with Tai Chi and people not understanding, it's making me difficult for me to conduct business, <laughs> okay? I can't run a school when everyone thinks Tai Chi is this, you know, fake this, fake, it, it's all like this like, you know, drama and fear and fakery. You know, nobody respects it anymore, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a little frustrating for me. Okay, so, Anyway, going back to the concept here, we can deal with it in the demo, live demos explaining to, uh, to Don. Actually, I'm gonna be short about that one so you guys can pull it around. I can, I can attack 
a fascial path leg, like, like the spiral line, I can attack that line. I can attack the back line and attack the entire line through the bone to the foot. But why does it work? Because the tension that I'm putting on these tendons is connected to the axial skeleton. Understand? There's all these anchor points. So if I'm hitting this fascia, that wave is going to get input into the axial skeleton. If I have two strings connected at two fixed points of a can, and I pull them across, you have the telephone game, they teach you this in kindergarten. If I have two cans and a string, and I pull it really tight, you can talk to your friend. Now, I don't know if you did this in your kindergarten class, but they did it in my school, right? You take two cans of freaking peas, Okay, you poke a little hole in one end, you poke a little hole in the other end, you put a string tie in knot, put a string tie in knot, you pull the two cans really, really tight. You should be able to talk to the other person. Okay? So when that other guy, people who are sending this to me, that he talks to the fascia, it's I talk through the fascia. I talk through the fascia, not to the fascia. The fascia is just a string. And in fact, the fascia is not even that. The fascia is the skin around the string. So if you've ever seen a, a rope that has like a poly, a poly coat on it or some kind of plastic coating, that coating on the outside of the string is the fascia. Okay? I want to be very clear to you guys what it is. So there's ways to use it, but understanding the effect it's having on the system. Okay? The only reason fascia has any uselessness is because it pulls on bone. Okay? We are bone puppets. So it, what's the point of me hitting his fascia if there's no tension? So now the compression is the worst. I'm going to compress the fascia, okay? The way that he, he said this in, uh, down here, you're saying you're going to compress a string, right? If I'm comp if the string is only useful if it's tense, right? Like what are strings really good for? You put, you put tension around something, and you put a knot around something, and you put tension in it. A limp string is like a limp dick. It's useless, except to pee, right? To throw it at the cat, let the cat play with it. So it's, in order to get tensegrity, if you ever see a tensegrity model, it's like, you know, if you, you have all these strings and these little sticks, and if you put pressure on one place, the energy gets displaced everywhere else. But the reason this works is because there's expansive tension that's created equal compressive tension on the post points. So, you have strings that are in expansion tension, which are causing compression in a sense by the opposite forces. You know what I mean? So this idea that uh, you're going to compress the fascia, no, you're going to compress the bone marrow, okay? And you're using tension that is already existent in the top in, in the fascia to ride that wave, like the telephone game, to get inside of the axial skeleton via the bone marrow of the surface of the bone. Because I need to attack his structure, his structure, the solid pieces. Okay? So if I'm if I'm just using the strings, how is that really gonna help me if it's if it's if, if I because again it's the words, right? How am I gonna compress a string? Right? If I compress a string, what happens? It loses its tension until I get to a, an infinite point and it starts to become tense again from compacting it. You get what I mean? So I, I don't remember the, pro the proper physics terms. There's tensile strain, uh, shearing force. Um, God damn it. I have to go review all this shit, guys. It's been like 15 years I taught this shit. But the, the terms are important, right? And if I have something, like for instance, I want to get hit. The whole idea I think he's trying to say is like, how do I get the guy to bounce? And why is he bouncing? Okay, why is the guy bouncing? So to say that I'm going to compress his fascia, what is the fascia connected to? What fascia is basically what holds muscles together. It gives muscles its shape. Fascia is what gives muscles its shape and holds it together. That's its main primary purpose from you know, physical function, right? Then you have transmitting energy you know, as, you know, as a wave, and then you have like nutrients and other fucking crack oil. But the main job of the fascia is to give muscle its shape and hold it together. Okay? No, uh, connective tissue would be tendon. Ligament tendon connects muscle to bone. Okay, it's not the connective tissue; it is the skin around the connective tissue. Fascia means face, in a sense. Okay, it's like it's it's the face of the skin. I'm trying to give you an understanding. Okay, it's what surround. It's the skin on the hot dog. It is not the meat in the hot dog. It is the skin, the little coating. When you cut a hot dog in half, 
and you see this, this meat inside, and there's that, that little plasticky outside. The plasticky outside is the fascia. And all it does is gives it its shape and holds its shape together. Okay? Now, it can transmit force down this line, but what is it really? How is it transmitting force? Because it's connected to anchor points via ligament, tendon, and sinew that connect to the bone and its origin and insertions. So I'm taking the tight rope, okay, and I'm going to send the wave through it to the other can. The can is the anchor point, the you know, insertion point or the origin point. Okay? So you got to think how muscles are connected, right? You have an origin, where right, the bicep is originating from under here, and it's attaching across the side of this hinge. So that connection, right, is what moves the bone. If there was no connection here, if you pulled your bicep muscle, have you ever seen that happen? The muscle just rolls into a little, like, it just rolls up, okay? And you just can't move your arm, okay? So the idea is that muscle moves bone, fascia moves bone. We're going to attack the bone, okay? So, yes, the feeling of these masses saying he's talking to the fascia, he's moving the fascia, is correct from an interoception standpoint, from his feeling and active awareness. And it's just not specific enough about the actual applied effect on the other person, okay? Because muscle un without tension and out connected anchor point, you're just a, it just limp strings in water. So limp strings in water, I can't push. I can only push on the limp string when it's in tension and connected to two anchor points. Then, during that tense area, if I can press that, that wave will be transferred to the anchor points, the origin and insertion points of the muscle tissue, and transfer it into the skeletal system. Okay? So go from the muscular to the skeletal. Okay? So it's not incorrect, it's just not a finished sequence of operations here, okay? So you cannot just compress fascia. You're, you're using fascia and you know, that's already in tension, and if you add some kind of compression to that, that compression is going to go into the bone marrow. So that's what I'm trying to explain to you. It's very confusing because there's too many extra words. So let's just bring it down into baby talk, okay? You are a bone puppet, like Pinocchio, okay? <laughs> All right, just imagine that nothing but bones. Okay? And these bones are moved by strings. Okay? If the string is limp, the bone can't move. You understand? I can't transfer energy into a limp string. That's why, <coughs> that's why they say, oh, be so loose. And, and that works sometimes because you know, if someone pushes energy and that's completely limp out, he has nothing to grab onto. So that's a valid thing to say. But you can't compress something that doesn't have any tension, a uh, tensile strength to uh, apply the force to. So you must first create a stretch condition or a, 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 an on position where that muscle is in flexion and it's already compressing itself and like becoming smaller, right? Or it's hyperextended and flexed and you feel it, the stretch like I'm trying to wave it. So I either have to compact that muscle and get it super tight or catch him when he's already super tight or I have to cause him to go into hyperextension, meaning pull the muscle all the way as far as it can go to its tense, which allows me to transmit a wave, which is to talk through the fascia, not talk to the fascia, okay? The fascia is a vehicle, is a pathway to the axial skeleton, okay? We are moving the skeleton system, all right? If the skeleton wasn't there and you tried to, if I just remove all your bones and we just had fascia, blood, sinews, veins, all that crap, First of all, you'd be a pile of fucking blubber on the floor. There'd be nothing there. But let's just assume in some weird world that like, you know, there's zero gravity and you're able to sustain this bag of water and gook. If I push it, what's gonna happen? <laughs> there's nothing there. So we're not really compressing the fascia unless it's already in extension tense. At that point, are we really compressing the fascia or are we compressing the entire system? So my point is we're sending compression into the system in unity. And this should be the light bulb moment of all these masters saying fascia. Fascia is an integrated system. And when Tom Myers, the whole premise of anatomy trains is to show that we're not working in segmented anatomy, that systems work holistically in unison. So how are we isolated work holistically in unison? 
So the whole point is, is diametrically opposed to the premise that what discovered fascia in the first place. <laughs> okay? So we gotta think of it a little differently. You, you can't just you can't separate the skin of the hot dog. When you're touching the fascia, you're touching all the the entire system. Okay? If I touch your skin, right, even if it's very lightly, there's blood compressing, there's a butterfly effect. That small compression causes blood everywhere to shift, right? So I'm just touching the skin. Can I touch the skin without compressing the muscle? Can I touch the skin without compressing the bone? No. Can I touch the skin without compressing the blood? No. Okay? Not even the, the, I can't even touch the skin without compressing the electromagnetic static energy in your body. It's a holistic thing. And this is why I'm saying that the words are important because people already think Tai Chi is bullshit and they think that the stuff that I and other masters can do is already beyond comprehension. So then if we don't bring these things down to one baby level and simplicity, but two, if we're going to go into science, we better be on our shit. It can't, it can't have any holes. Because everyone's gonna look for a hole, which is why I'm constantly self-correcting, okay? And I'm looking for new ways to make sure it's perfect, because I know it's not perfect. I know that even I am not perfect, okay? I understand my flaws and my understanding of it, which is why it frustrates me even more, because I want to make sure I'm correct, <laughs> okay? When I see all these other masters really trying hard, and I know that they're so close, but they're still not getting it, because they're not seeing the concept. If Tom Meyer's whole premise is that the body is holistic and the fascia is proving that the body is working in closed kinetic chains in unison, how are we in the Tai Chi world now going against the premise, the, the first premise of anatomy trains by saying that we're using it separately from the system? Can't be done. Did I miss anything? Okay, so, okay, I mean when you stretch and release it, it causes the balance. Okay, no, I'm trying to say this again. I'm not compressing it. How am I going to compress just the skin of the hot dog? Now, some of the masters are saying that they'll connect to the fascia. They're talking about interoception. They're talking about the feeling that they're getting. Okay? But the mechanical applied force, that is not what's happening. So I think, uh, is it Mark Ramos that said this? Right? He was talking about he could, because he says it, but he says it, that makes more sense. But I think, you know, with the other guys that are really fucking off, they're just off the fucking wall, okay? But even he's not, I don't think he's doing it on purpose. I think that when you, you're trying to explain snippets, and then people will grab the snippet, and then, you know? I'm pretty sure he understands that you can't just attack the fascia and separate it from the bone structure without literally removing the origin and assertion of the muscles. So we're not compressing it. We're compressing the system holistically in unison, okay? If, and again, we're actually going for the bone marrow because if, if you don't have any tension, I can just grab you. Let's just say we're playing push hands and you do this limpy bullshit. I can just grab you by the bicep, grab the freaking humerus bone, the bone, and then shove it into the ball socket of the shoulder joint and then grab right into your spine. So fuck all your fascia. I'm gonna fucking manhandle you. I'm gonna grab you by both of your fucking arms, push those bones into your shoulder socket, and then fucking launch you. Okay, so the idea of these words is so misconstrued and we're already in so much trouble as a community here, we gotta fix it, okay? No. So you're talking about the, the pop effect, there's several different reasons that's happening, but every single one of them goes back to what's happening to the bone marrow, okay? Everything, everything, everything goes back to the bone marrow, okay? There's no way around this. If I, if, let's just say, like I showed you how I can use your skin and I can just connect to your skin and move you. What am I actually doing? If I compress this, I'm not really compressing it, I'm causing a tension, a stretch. Okay? So compression is causing stretch. And if I just go and compress you down, it's not going to have any effect on your axial skeleton. I need to compress you on the linear path of the bone marrow. I need to find that linear line and ride the way into your axial cells, meaning the center post, your spine. So if I do anything that bounces, like put the hand in the guy's chest, right? If I put the guy's hand in the guy's chest, what am I really going for? I'm attacking the pressure in his lungs, I'm attacking the tension all over the system, but I'm going for his spine through the rib cage, <laughs> okay? 
That, but my point, but the thing is, the words are very important because I understand where you're at and you want to get notoriety and try to find masters. So I, I get your whole scheme, bro. Okay? And I'm okay with it as long as you do fucking train fucking hard and don't make me look like an asshole. Okay? So I, I understand. Okay? So the thing is, if you're going to start like just grabbing on their words with no real understanding, you're going to have many problems on your path. You need to figure out how to make these words yours and understand them and then reiterate them, paraphrase them in your own language. You never understand something until you can take a word and take a phrase and then flip it on its head and make it. This is why Jesus always spoke in parables, right? You know, did you hear the story of, uh, what is it? The frog and the scorpion, right? The frog is in the fucking river, the scorpion is like, let me go, blah, 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 forget on the fucking back, blah, 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 okay, I'm a fucking scorpion, you've heard this, right? That story can be told 50 different ways. It doesn't be a frog and a scorpion. It could, it could be a fucking a turtle and a, and a fox. It could, you know what I mean? You can, you can keep flipping the, the agonist protagonist with the story and the metaphor of what you're saying. So until, you're, until you have enough understanding that you can do that, you gotta be careful teaching, okay? But going back to why he pops. So there's, no, there's more than one reason why they pop. But at the end of the day, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get his skeleton, okay, to move. All of this stuff, everything comes down to the point where I want to move his skeleton, his structure. So what am I going to use to attack a skeleton? I can use the surface pressure, because say, because skin is fascia, epidermis is fascia, okay? So I can use the outer fascia layer, okay? If I can press anywhere inside of that, I'm immediately going into, into you know, sinew and bone. There's no way that I'm going to take the skin Underneath the skin, so it's like I have a hot dog under my skin, okay? And then I'm going to attack the layer of skin of the hot dog through my own skin, okay? You can't separate your energy to that. It's like you're talking about something that's the length of a piece of fucking paper. It's a piece of paper. So we can't do that. So what I'm what you need to do, so let's just say I want to move, right? What's happening in the system at that moment? If he's expanded, then I can attack and talk through his fascia because the fascia is tight and expanded, all right? Or if he's tense and compressing in this way because he's already created tension this way, I can grab that and get to his bone, okay? I can also just bypass all that and go right into the bone by compressing through, attacking the bone structure, and then riding into the bone marrow and learning your path. When you get the guy to go and put your hand on his chest and he pops, there's several reasons for that. Is his center of balance and mass uh, misaligned? Um, is his air and his body in the wrong place? You know, did you compress his joints and decompress his joints? Is he in a state of expansion and then you compress that expansion? But even when you do that, you're still compressing his bone marrow. <laughs> because if I'm expanded, Right? And I have expansive force. Any energy that's transferred into these tendons, it goes where? It goes to the origin of the assertion. If I have, let's just say I have a, okay, here's my, my bias. I'll make like some logs. You can see that. Here's the hinge. I mean, it's really easy to see this. Okay? Here is the humerus bone. Here's the radial bone. Okay? And here's your bicep origins over here, and it attaches over here, okay? This is basically what your arm function is like from the bicep. Making sense? Where is this energy gonna go? What am I actually doing with this? That the fascia only works because it's under tension and load, stretched, hyper-stretched, or hyper-tense from trying to go inward. So if the muscle, if the, you know, the angle becomes more acute, right? This gets tighter. Okay, if it's obtuse angle, you get hyperextension. Making sense? So these are the two ways. If the muscle is in its neutral state, I can't do anything with it. That's why a lot of these Tai Chi guys, they like to play noodle and super soft. And there's a moment of opportunity, right? So, um, that's it, that's it, right? It's like, it's a moment of opportunity you can grab, okay? If, if, Someone's about to push me, and I let him and I just drop that load for a quick second. I can, I can, screw, you know, screw him up. But aside from that, <laughs> okay. 
So are you following so far? I know it's a lot. <laughs> All right? So, so basically, no matter what we're doing, we're trying to use anything we can to affect his structure. Okay? Ah, good. I have the book, but I haven't unpacked because this was my life is crazy, man. I don't know what's gonna happen to me. I don't know how long I'm gonna be around. <laughs> so that's the idea. So let's just say, uh, let's say I'm in a really good. You, your example is the guy's in a really good stance, and you put pressure on his chest, and he pops. You do that to me, I'm not gonna pop. Why? Right? Because I created conditions in my body to withstand that. Okay. So the reason people pop is. One is that the alignment of the bone structure is incorrect, can't take the load down to the ground, basically route the load hitting the axial skeleton into the femur, okay? And then ground it out to the ground. Two, you have excess tension, which is allowing a reverberating wave, which is still pulling on your axial skeleton, okay? So at any way you cut it, we're really trying to get the guy's spine and the organs that are connected to it, because all this organs and stuff, it's like a, a bag of, of, of fluid and crap, like, you know? It's picture like a, a Ziploc bag with a bunch of like vegetables and meat and, and, and like water, <laughs> okay? And then you, you put that on a stick. And the stick is on wheels, all right? If you push that bag of, of blubber, not much is gonna happen until the tension on the bag hits the anchor points with the origin insertion of the muscles. That's gonna transfer that force wave into the stick, which is going to move the wheels, <coughs> okay? Now, the bounce, there's several reasons for that. You can pop someone off their base, but all of it comes down to the spring system. So you have a spring ligament in your ankle foot, right, that allows you to be bouncy. You also have bone marrow, which is bouncy, and then you have synovial fluid, which is the fluid that lubricates in between every single hinge in your body. The combination of all these systems creates a spring system. Right? I keep talking about the spring system. So the same way that when you do that and the guy pops, that's the same mechanism backwards of how you can fudge in people with very little energy. You take a load into the body, it compresses the system, and then you reverse that blow up that wave. The exercise I show on the wall, the fudging thing, that's the same idea. It's the same idea backwards. But really the, the key today is to understand it's more important to, un to be able to articulate the functions of application in baby level than to use all the science -y stuff. Because especially science that's not 100% conclusive yet. And then when you mix that in a community of people who talk in riddles and metaphors by default, they don't even realize sometimes that even the best of them are still kind of touching on the woo side when they're trying to be sciencey. Okay? For instance, that guy I kept saying, talk to the fascia. It should be talk through the fascia. Right? Because you're really sending a vibrational wave through a tense string. And it's not really the fascia because, again, you cannot separate fascia from the muscles, tissues that it is supporting. Fascia is literally, its main function, first and foremost, is to encapsulate and keep the shape of tissue, of organs, of anything. Skin is fascia, okay? This is fascia, okay? Any kind of skin around an object is a fascia, okay? This is fascia, okay? This is fascia. Uh, you do actually. Okay. Oh, I have to bring you on first. I actually can invite you to, to uh, duet with me, and we can do a, we can do a stream together. You want? You know what I mean? So let's let's let me try to do that real fast. Okay. I think I made my point. Of, and this is more than enough. I don't like to do more than thirty minutes. When I'm doing uh, an explanation or anything. So. You want to do it, well, we can try to do it really fast if you want. And uh, yeah, I hope this makes the, the case because I, I want to end with this. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to these masses. I'm just frustrated at the world because they keep, you know, they, they keep throwing, you know, all of us under the bus already. And then, you know, some of these, you know, big competitors are making us look bad. I don't think, you know, not on purpose, but they don't understand what we're dealing with because they're living in their world, okay? They don't understand how their world and their advertisement is affecting the rest of us in the real world. So I want to make that clear. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to you know, be rude or anything like that, but we have to fix this kind of stuff. You know? and, and most of them have good intentions. You know? And you know, I, I get, that's the best I can do. Okay? So I hope this is making sense, but we need to stop 
saying things in isolation, and there's some guys who are really good like the one I, I, I understand what he means, you know what I mean? And I think that it's so hard to get these points across in a short clip. You know, I mean, maybe he's gone over it and he has like a, a billion videos now. So maybe he's gone over it more elaborately or in his private classes, I don't know. But he's so far the closest I've heard to a correct analogy of Fasha. Everybody else is like just on some fucking beyond woo-woo shit. So we gotta, we gotta get this uh, a little more. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna sign you off. I'm gonna try to come back with uh, with Don, and we're gonna test this duet thing. And you know, if it works, it works. And uh, I'm glad you appreciate the stuff. And I'll see you guys later. And remember what I said, guys. You know, if I'm you know, guys like me are not gonna be able to survive. I'm tough, but I'm getting to the point where my you know, how much more can I take alone? You know, I'm going to need protection from the outside. Okay, guys, gotta start protecting me. All right, and you know, we need to have people pay attention to what's been happening, you know, and look at my community tab and see what I'm talking about. Look at my short views and see what I'm talking about. The system is broken. There's nothing wrong with my channel. There's nothing wrong with my content. They have purposely turned the switch off, okay? Love you guys. Thank you for your support. I'll see you guys in a day.